some old Tom Emmanuel. You may be seated. that there's one thing in it, and it's food. Have y'all ever noticed that? I don't know if y'all have paid attention to that, but I was thinking about, you know, this week and everything that's going on with this week and, and how the Lord is going to bless us and, and there's going to be presents that's given out and we'll have an opportunity to be around all of our family and friends. And the one thing I wrote down, and food. I don't know if y'all have ever paid attention to that, but I'm hungry all the time, it seems like, so uh, I'm sure y'all know exactly what I'm talking about. But you know, there's a lot of smiles that's going on this time of the year. And I really believe that we, today, celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ better than they did while Jesus was walking on this earth. And you might be saying, Brother Steve, what do you mean by that? Well, I, I want to just share this with you because... Uh, because this is something that's really just the Lord's giving it to me. And, and I'm one of those pastors that I, I struggle with, with God makes me preach this message in this kind of way. I am going to preach about Jesus. I am going to preach about that baby. But God never lets me do stuff the same way because He didn't wire me that way. So I want to share something with you that I want you to think about. And the Bible it tells us, and because that song that they just got through saying it says is there room in in your heart and i want y'all to look in luke chapter 2 verse 7 because whenever jesus was born there wasn't room for him 
And the Bible says this, And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for him in the end. And y'all, I think about this as, as I think about this young man and, 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 and this expecting mother coming into the, this city and nobody, nobody would give them their room in the end whenever they got there. And I really believe that a lot of us would. We would see it there was a need and we would, we would step out and I see you shaking your head because yes, we, we are the people that pays attention to things today. But I want y'all to think about this. We sing this song. Oh, come to my heart, Lord Jesus, there's room in my heart for Thee. But you know something, would we really give up our room? Do we really give up the room that we're supposed to and we put the Lord Jesus in our heart where He's supposed to be? And you know, I think about old Herod the king. So we, we figure out that we're doing a little bit better job than the innkeeper did. We would have we'd have give up our room, wouldn't we? What about old Herod the king? Herod the king, you know, all he wanted to do is he, he was scared to death of Jesus Christ. He had already heard about him. And y'all go to Matthew chapter 2. And I want to read this scripture to you in verse 1. It says, Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east of Jerusalem. And they were saying, where is he that is born the king of Jews? For we have seen his star. So, so y'all think about this. We sang that song. Oh, holy night, the stars are brightly shining. So we know that song and we sing that song because we realize that on that night that Jesus was born, that they were able to see Jesus, it says, his star. So we know that it was a clear, pretty night. So we, we, we sing about that. There's a lot of things that we sing about this, and listen to this. And he said that we would see his star out of the east, that we'd come and worship him. But the Bible goes on to say this, And when Herod the king had heard these things, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. He was worried about him losing his ranking and his power. And the Bible says, And when he had gathered all the chief priests and the scribes and the people together, he demanded of them where the Christ would be born. And it goes on to say in verse 7, and it says, And Herod, when he had privately called the wise men, and he inquired to them diligently what time the star, star appeared. And he sent to them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for this young child. And when you have found him, bring him, bring the word to me again that I may worship him. Right here I look and I see a complete liar that he's sitting there saying, whenever you get there and you see this baby, you let me know where he's at. I want to go worship him. But we know now, you know why? We know that he's a liar because because we've got the word of God to find out that old Herod, he was lying about what his intentions was. And the Bible goes on to say, and listen to what it says in verse 9, And when they heard this, the king, they departed, and lo, the star which they saw of the east, and they went before him till they came, and they stood over this child. But right here is going to be the place to where you find your first true worshipers. The Bible says, And when they saw the star, that they rejoiced with exceedingly great joy. These people was out in the middle of the desert, and they looked up and they saw this star, and they started rejoicing because they knew where that star was taking them. Y'all, I, I want you to think about this. Do you know where Jesus Christ wants to take you? Has it ever crossed your mind to worship Him for what all He has done for you in your life? How God has blessed you in your walk, in your everyday life. And the Bible says, And whenever they came into the house, they saw this young child and Mary his mother. And they fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened up their treasures, they presented him uh, gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And being warned of God in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed their own way into the country. I think about this because these men were so wise about what they did. But not only that, they listened to the Lord. They listened to the Spirit of God. And the Bible says in verse 13, and it says, Because all that Herod wanted is he wanted Jesus to die so he didn't have to worry about him. So I want you all to listen to this scripture. 
And when they were departed, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise, and take that young child and his mother and flee to Egypt, and be there thou until I bring thee word, for Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. Whenever we look at it and we think about this, we're, we're far better than old Herod is. Have you ever thought about that? And the Bible goes on and talks more because the, the wise men went the other way. And the Bible says in verse 16, I'm getting somewhere, y'all follow me. Then Herod, whenever he saw them, that he was mocked, or whenever they made fun of him, and the, and the wise men, was, he was exceedingly angry, and sent forth, and he slew all the male children that were in Bethlehem, and all it was in the coast thereof, from two years old and under, according to the time that they have diligently inquired this of the wise men. Whenever we look and we think about this, everything that Jesus went through, in order to be the savior of the world. And he had somebody who was wanting to take his life. And, and we sing this, Oh, come all ye faithful, joyful. Every one of these songs that I'm singing, they're songs that we sing all the time. But whenever we look and we think about it, these, man, these wise men, they were so faithful. They listened to the Spirit of God and they, and they realized that they were serving the Lord. But I want y'all to think about this. There's people in this world today that they want to destroy Jesus and His name today. They want to take out every bit of prayer out of this nation. They also want to, to make sure that there's not any churches going on. They also, they want to put in their own false religion. We're not going to allow it to happen. Because we had that baby that came here and lived that sinless life and he died on Calvary's cross so that every single person could end up going to heaven one of these days. And the only thing I ask you, is there really room in your heart this morning? Is there room in your heart? Are you willing to fight for your freedom to worship God? Because if you're not, I want you to know it's a sad day in this world right now if we're not willing to worship our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I want y'all to think about this, and y'all can go to Luke chapter 3. I want to read you this scripture, and I want y'all to see this. But John, he saw this, and it was something that was important to John. And in Luke chapter 3, verse 6, it says, And all flesh shall see the salvation of God. Y'all, we're reading about the salvation of God right now. We know that it's real. You know how we know that it's real? We know that it's real because we've heard about this baby all of our life. It's something that we, that we know and that we love. And you know something, oh John, he knew the truth. Luke chapter 3, look at verse 15. I want y'all to see this because all the people there, all the people, and the Bible says they had expectations. And all of them, they were reasoning in their heart of John. And they was asking John, they said, John, are you the Christ? This was after he seen, knew who John was. And listen to what he said. Listen to how John explained him. He said, John answered in verse 16. He said unto them, I indeed baptize you with water, but there is one mightier than I that cometh, the latches of whose shoes I am not worthy to un unloose. He said, He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. That's what Jesus Christ is trying to do in all of our lives today. And you know something? We, we sing that song. I love to tell the story. It will be my theme in glory to tell the old, old story of Jesus and His love. See, I want y'all to know, to me, to me, that old, old story is brand new. And it's something that still resonates in my heart. It's something that I, that I, that I want to live every day about this child. And y'all, I think about it because old John got it. And I ask you a question, do you? Do you get it? Because I want y'all to go to Luke chapter 2 and verse, and verse 1. I want y'all to see because I want to read you. I want to read you about the birth of Jesus Christ. Because I think it's important for us to realize that the birth of Jesus Christ is for each and every one of us. And it's for us today. And the Bible says in Luke chapter 2 and starting with verse 1, it says this. 
And it came to pass in those days that there were a decree uh, from Caesar Augustus and, and all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when, when Cyrenius was governor of Syria. And it went out to all to be taxed, everyone in his own city. Do you know every time we come together as a family, we get one of the kids to read this, this right here. We let them read this scripture. You know why? Because we want to make sure every time we meet as a family that we make sure that we realize what the reason for the Christmas season is all about. How important it is for us to keep Jesus in the center of all the gifts and center of all the food and all the things that we do. We've got to make sure that we keep the birth of Jesus Christ relevant today in every one of our lives. So listen, and it says this right here. And they all went out to be taxed, everyone to his own city. In verse 4, And Joseph also went up to Galilee out of the city of Nazareth unto Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was the first of the house and the lineage of David. Every one of these things was something that was prophesied about, about the coming of the Messiah. And everything happened exactly the way the Bible told it it was going to happen. And it goes on to say, to be taxed with Mary, his spouse, wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, that the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth this son. And, and, and it says, and she wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there's no room in the inn. And I think about this because I visually, I see all, the, all the, 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 the signs and the thought about everything that's going on at, at this time as the Bible was telling about this. And I see all the, all the uh, Mary holding a baby whenever we see it on, in people's yards all the time and wrap that baby up in swaddling clothes. And I, I, I think, man, it wouldn't have been the same if, if Jesus would have had a room. You know why? Because prophecy said that he was going to come exactly the way he did with nothing, but he was going to be the king of the world. See, whenever I read these scriptures, I, I think about this. And there was in the same country shepherds abiding in the field and keep him watching over the flock by night. And lo, the angel came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone around about them, and they were so afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring ye good tidings of great joy. And I want you to pay attention to this scripture right here that I'm about to read. It says, For unto you this day. I want to share with you how important it is for you to realize why Jesus came to this earth. Jesus came to this earth for unto you. He came for unto you. He came for unto you. He came for unto you. Jesus came into this earth for unto each and every one of us. He was born this day in the city of David to be a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. Everybody needs to realize that this is not just for a Christmas season. He came for unto you to save your soul. That's what Jesus came for. It's important for us to realize this. And it says, And this shall be the sign unto you. You shall find a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes and lay in a manger. We hear the song all the time. Away in a manger, no crib for a bed. The little Lord Jesus lay down his sweet head. We've sang this. We've taught it to our children. And now we sing it as adults. You know why? Because it's what we've all heard and we know it to be true. And it says, And suddenly there was the angel, a multitude of heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. And we, we stand around here all the time and sing, Hark the herald angels sing glory. Y'all know what we're doing. Every single one of us, we sing, we sing are we truly worshiping God while we're singing all these songs? And the Bible said, And it came to pass that the angels, that they were gone away from heaven, and the shepherds said one to another, Now let us go to Bethlehem and see this thing which come to pass, which the Lord had made known unto us. And they came and they hurried. They was in haste. And they found Mary and Joseph and this baby lying in a manger. I, I got to share this with you because I want y'all to see this. Every one of these shepherds, they left everything they knew to go and see that baby laying in a manger. They wanted to see if everything, listen, I don't know about you, 
but you may have come to church this morning and you really want to know about Jesus, well, let me tell you something. If you really want to know about Jesus, you can see His glory. All you've got to do is just say, Lord, I need you to be Lord and ruler and, 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 and everything in our life because I'll tell you about this baby. If the baby had a king scared about his throne, imagine what he can do for you today. See, whenever I read this and I see this, and the Bible says, and it says, and when they had seen it, every person on this planet, there's a young lady that asked the Lord to come into her heart, and, and, and I, I, I was able to be there and listen to her and heard her pray. And after she got through praying, I asked her, I said, do you want to tell anybody about that? And she said, I sure do. Y'all, Whenever you truly give your heart to Jesus and whenever you truly say, Lord, I want you to come into my heart, Lord Jesus, because there's room in my heart for you. Whenever you do that, the next thing you're going to do is you're going to start telling people about what Jesus did for, to you and how Jesus changed your life. These shepherds right here, they could not go any further without telling people. And listen to what they said. And whenever they had seen this baby, they made known abroad saying that all that thing that, that was told concerning this child and all that they had heard and they had wondered of all those things that were told by the shepherds. But the Bible says this. But Mary kept all these things and, they, and she pondered in them a heart. And we know this song. Mary, did you know that your baby boy is Lord of all creation? Mary, did you know that your baby boy will one day rule the nation? See, we are singing songs week in and week out, getting ready for the birth of Jesus Christ, how we're celebrating it today. But I want y'all to know it's important that we always have on the tip of our tongue about Jesus Christ. Just like those shepherds, we need to be excited about it. We need to tell people about it. We need to have joy in our heart. I got one last verse, and I want y'all to see this verse. It says, And the shepherds returned glorifying and praising God. And it says, For all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told unto them. And here we are today. We say, Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. question I ask you is this, and this is, this is what's in, important to me. Is this morning, are we just singing, or are we really praising God? See, because I want y'all to know, I had an opportunity to go and, and, uh, and, and wasn't able to go, but I, I had an opportunity to go and sing Christmas carols, and I wasn't able to go this week. But I, but I realized that, that in my heart, there's, a, there's a, a Christmas carol, that old joy to the world. Joy to the world, the Lord has come. See, let me share this with you. Jesus Christ has already came one time into this world. He came, he was in a lowly stable. He, hey, his mom and daddy had nothing. They didn't have no money. They didn't have anything. And he came to this earth and he lived a sinless, perfect life. And he died on the cross so that every one of us would be able to know him. And we would be able to tell people that we would go up on a mountain and say, Joy to the world! The Lord has come. I want to ask you, are you going to celebrate this Christmas season the way it's supposed to be celebrated? Are you going to tell people about Jesus Christ? Are you going to tell people that, because listen, this old world that we're living in here now, I've heard you pray this morning and everybody's talked and prayed about our nation and talked about everything that's going on. I want you to know I quit watching it because all it was doing was killing my spirit and the Spirit of God said, let it go and praise me. So I want you to do one thing for me. For the rest of this time, I want you to praise God and find out what God wants you to do as individuals, and I want you to make Him real in your life. Then we can say, joy to the world, the Lord has come. i got one last question. Does this baby mean something to you? 
See, yesterday I was able to keep this baby and I was able to hold on to that baby and, and boy, it just blessed my heart. I, Carrie and I don't have babies anymore, but we borrow them every once in a while. And it's something that when we had that baby, it was, it was something that I, that I realized that you're supposed to have babies while you're young. You know why? We had to tag team that baby. Had to tag team that baby. I'm going to tell you something. I'm not, I'm not what I used to be. And I realize that my time on this earth, that my days are numbered according to God's word. My times are numbered. And the one thing I want to do between now and the time that, that, that the Lord Jesus comes back and gets me in however way he does, I want to be able to share and tell about what Jesus Christ means to me today. I don't want to know what Jesus meant to you back whenever you was 13, 15, 21. I want to know what Jesus Christ and His saving grace and His knowledge and His love and His compassion for you, I want to know what it means to you today. Don't just sing. Praise Him. Praise Him like you mean it from all your heart. Let people see you this season praising God. Let people know that it's all about this baby and it's all about this Savior that has come unto this earth. I ask you, do you know Him? Brother Steve, you know something? I'm, I'm struggling this year. Well, I want you to know a lot of people struggling this year, but I'm going to tell you what we've got to do. We've got to get back to that cross. We've got to get back to the foot of that cross. We've got to, the Bible says, cast all your cares upon him for he cares for you. The Bible tells us to humble ourselves in the sight of God and he'll lift you up. The Bible says, if his people who call by my name will humble themselves and pray, I will heal their land. Here's the time that we can have our land healed and we've got to go to the right person, which is Jesus Christ. My hope is that you know him. Don't just sing. Know Him. We're going to sing a song in just a second. It's not, it's not your, your normal invitation song. It's a song that we're going, to, we're going to sing praises. And I told Landon, I said, Landon, whenever you get up here to sing this song after a while, I said, don't you back down. You sing this song with all you've got because, because I want people to sing and praises to God. I want people to come to the altar like they're supposed to. I want you to do business with God in your seat like you ought to. I want you to get back to your worship just like you ought to because it is our responsibility to worship our Savior, Jesus Christ. So let's pray. Lord, I come to you. Every person in here right now, they're thinking, they're thinking, they're thinking, how can I worship? How can I praise God in the right way? And all we've got to do, the Bible tells us to humble ourselves, to, to just bow down before you. God, I pray that we as a church, that we right now, that we search our heart and make sure that we're right and people sees us and they hear about us worshiping you and they know that we're serious. God, I pray that the old devil stays out of our churches and out of our homes and out of our life. And I pray, God, that you reign supreme. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen.